In a previous vlog, I explained why you would use a loopback interface and I gave you one reason. Let's look at another reason. Another reason why you want to use a loopback is because routing protocols such as OSPF use the loopback to determine the router IDs of routers in the OSPF network. So on these routers, show IP interface brief. I've configured a loopback zero with this IP address, and I've also configured the loopbacks on each router. So router one is 192.168.1.1, router two is dot two, router three is dot three. Now, why is that important? It's important for routing protocols. So when we enable a routing protocol such as OSPF, it selects a router ID for itself. So I'm gonna enable OSPF on all interfaces on this router and just simply put them in area zero. So show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is enabled on all interfaces on the router. Show IP OSPF interface. Notice here loopback zero has this IP address configured in area zero, but the router ID is 192.168.1.2. In other words, the router ID selected is the highest IP address of any interface. And if they are loopbacks, the loopbacks override the physical interfaces. So the router ID is selected on the highest loopback address. In this case, 192.168.1.2. Now that's important because in OSPF, a router is identified by its router ID. It's kind of like your name. So my name's David. It would be terrible if my name changed every day or whenever there was a problem. And that's the issue with OSPF. If you don't use a loopback interface and the router ID was selected off a physical interface and that interface went down, the router ID would change. But here it's consistent. Notice on gigabit 01, the router ID is still 192.168.1.2. So let's have a look at the problem. On router one, we've got two IP addresses configured on physical interfaces, and then we've got these loopback interfaces. But what I'm gonna do now is remove the loopback interfaces of router one. So show IP interface brief. Do that again. We only have IP addresses on the physical interfaces. So now, router OSPF one network, and I'll just enable OSPF on all interfaces once again. Notice the neighbor relationship has established. We've actually got two, but notice the neighbor ID is 192.168.1.2, whereas on this side, the neighbor ID is 10.1.2.1, the highest IP address of a physical interface. This loopback doesn't exist on router one. So on router two, show IP OSPF neighbor. Neighbor relationship is full and established to 10.1.2.1. On router one, show IP OSPF neighbor. Notice the difference. Neighbor ID is 192.168.1.2. IP address on the interface that the neighbor is using is, is 10.1.2.2. And on this interface, gigabit 00, it's 10.1.1.2. So the same neighbor ID, the loopback, and just to make sure that it's not confusing, I'll add that here as well. We've got this loopback configured on router two in addition to 2.2.2.2. .2 on router two now, when we look at the neighbor relationship with router one, neighbor ID is 10.1.2.1. That's this interface, gigabit 01. The IP addresses on the physical interfaces are those on router one. So why is the router ID important? Well, when an interface goes down and the router is rebooted, the router ID will change. And in certain cases in OSPF, we specify the router ID in commands. One of those cases which you don't need to know for CCNA is a virtual links. In this command, we are specifying the router ID of a remote router. A virtual link allows us to create a virtual transit across an area. In this example, the backbone area is on the left. Area one is in the middle. 
and area two is on the right. Area two is separated from the backbone area by area one, but a virtual link allows us to tunnel area zero across area one and fulfill one of the requirements of OSPF, which states that all areas have to be adjacent to area zero. Now the problem is, in our topology at the moment, on router one, show IP, OSPF, interface. Notice the router ID is 10.1.2.1. So that's the router ID of the router, and you can see that on both interfaces. What I'm gonna do, however, is shut gigabit 01 down. So currently, show IP OSPF interface shows that this is the router ID. If the router rebooted, the router ID would change. Now instead of rebooting the router, I'm gonna type clear IP OSPF process, and I'm gonna clear all OSPF processes. So show IP OSPF interface. In this case, the router ID didn't change, so, so what I'll do is save the configuration and reboot the router. So why is that a problem? If the interface that you're using was selected by the router as the router ID, and you configured that router ID in this command, and the interface went down and the router rebooted, this command would no longer work because the router ID had changed. Notice Cisco tell you the router ID is usually the highest IP address on the box or the highest loopback address if one exists. The router ID is only calculated at boot time or at any time when the OSPF process is restarted. So what's the recommendation for OSPF? specify a loopback address and then manually configure the router ID. So the router is rebooted. Show IP OSPF interface. Notice the router ID has changed. It's now 10.1.1.1. That means if you were using a virtual link as an example, the virtual link would break and your network would break. Okay, that concludes this vlog entry. Thanks Pedro for the question. Please feel free to send me questions and I'll do my best to answer all of them. I'll see you tomorrow. All the very best.